So uh, this supplemental video is related to slide number four of lecture four. Now here the focus will be on the concept concept of entropy. Uh, throughout the discussion in the lecture and also by reading the textbook, uh, as you can see, we can qualitatively describe entropy as a phenomena where uh, energy and matter to disperse. Now, so this is um, very intuitive, as we uh, mentioned in many examples. But what I want to do in this uh, supplemental, supplemental window is, video is that we want to show you how we can uh, use at least one example to demonstrate that entropy can be described or calculated uh, quantitatively, at least using the ideal gas system. So, um, so, so let's imagine the case where we have a um, ideal gas that um, enclosed in a isolated chamber where um, the temperature is kept at constant, but initially it was separated on one half of the chamber, so the pressure uh, would be uh, at one value and and uh, volume in the left half left side is visible. Now imagine that so these gas molecules will be enclosed in here. Now if we remove the separation of the uh, the chamber, then the gas, the ideal gas, will dissipate. So it will relate to the top what we're talking about. So we know that. Now the gas will fill up in all the chamber. Now the, the volume is the, a bigger volume, a, a much larger. And the temperature still kept, kept the same, but now the pressure will be different. And obviously, the volume now changes into large volume. So um, our intuition, also as stated on the top, says that this process, the forward process, will be spontaneous. That means if you separate the gap, the gas is going to rush into the big volume, whereas the inverse process is not spontaneous. That is, the gas will not just all try to uh, cloud it on one, uh, one side of the chamber and leave the other side as a vacuum. So how do we de describe this phenomenon uh, using laws of some dynamics? Let's say if we're going to use uh, first law of some dynamics, then uh, the first process, you know, the open the chamber, what happened to the internal energy? Well, there'll be no change, right? Because no, this is an isolated system, so uh, no work, no heat coming in or out, no work is done because there's this is a vacuum, so basically Q is zero, W equals to zero. But uh, even uh, last supplemental video, we introduced the entropy. It will also be zero, because in this case, entropy is internal energy plus PV. Um, the change of entropy will be the change of internal energy plus the change of the PV. But since it's ideal gas on the constant temperature, the P2 V2 equals the P1 V1. That's basically just ideal gas. So basically, um, delta H, delta U will not be able to uh, use, use uh, you can use this, this two entity, uh, the two quantity of the state function to predict uh, the difference between the two points because they're the same internal energy and entropy. So what really changed in the system? So basically, uh, what we have a problem is we know the system changed, you know, because the gas become uh, more dispersed, but. All this uh, state function or quantity we have talked about so far, whether it's internal energy or entropy, there's no difference. Also, for this process itself, uh, the, there's no heat exchange isolated. No work is done because the right side is vacuum. So the question is, how do we actually describe some sort of aspect of the system that has been changed? Um, now. Previously, we have um, discussed that 
experimentally, we can always measure the heat or in the ideal gas, ideal gas case, we can use work uh, to calculate some aspect of change of the system to relate experimental measurement into uh, either change of internal energy or entropy. So now we want to see if we can actually carry out some sort of imaginary experiment where we can measure the heat or work and then ask ourselves if the heat or work tell us some aspect of the system that has been changed and then that aspect of the system's change is related to this concept of energy matter become more dispersed when the system going from the left side to the right side. And also furthermore, if that quantity can be used to describe the tendency of system become more dispersed in terms of energy or matter, and if so, then that, that, that state function will become very useful. So with that in mind, uh, what we can always imagine ourselves doing is, that, let's say if we actually take the ideal gas uh, to the left state, T, P1, V1, instead of that, it spontaneously uh, dispersed, uh, we were actually going to ask it to do work. So this way, we can always measure something associated with this process. For example, if we uh, let the gas expand against an uh, external pressure, and then the work would be the external pressure and whatever the volume change that will be um, involved in this process. Now, so if the work is uh, can be calculated this way, so for ideal gas at um, uh, isothermal expansion process, well, that, that is the temperature will be the, kept the same. Then when the temperature keeps the same for the ideal gas, the internal energy is equal to zero. So the delta U equals Q plus W, and then Q which is always equal to minus W. Then the heat, which can be easily measured, can um, be calculated through the work. So you can just Q equals P E X delta V. So we can measure the heat, we might even calculate the work. But the problem here is that this constant, this quantity, is variable. What I mean by that is it really depending on the external pressure, right? So that is, if you uh, let the gas expand against different pressure, you will get different amount of work, therefore different amount of quantity. So clearly, this is not going to be something that we can use to indicate the change of the state because um, the, if, if we're looking for some sort of state function change between starting point and end point, that, it, that change of state function should not be dependent on the path to get there. Because it, it it's a function only going to be determined by the starting point and end point. That's the definition of the state, the uh, state of fun function of the state. So, so clearly, we needed to carry out a one particular process that process is so well defined, then the quantity of the heat or work uh, only has one defined value. So this is when actually we earlier in uh, the supplemental video one, when we talk about the ideal gas undergo reversible isothermal expansion. So in that case, uh, we have described a situation where uh, the expansion is carried out in the process or so at any given moment the internal pressure and the external pressure equal except if you keep the constant temperature this internal pressure is going to keep changing as the volume increase right so we have described if we let the system to undergo isothermal expansion from P1 V1 into a P2 V2 but go through the isothermal expansion. Uh, so you, I want you to go back to watch the uh, supplemental, supplemental video 1 or look at the um, lecture 2's uh, PowerPoint.
how to calculate the work. In this case, uh, it will be calculated as the integration from the uh, volume 1 to volume 2 and P dV. Right? And if we actually substitute by ideal gas law, and then the P equals R, nRT over V dV, and then and this gives us minus nRT natural log V2 over V1. So going up here, what we can go back to the first law of some dynamics. When we have isothermal process for ideal gas, the internal energy change is zero. So which means the heat and the work add together should be zero. Now if the work we have expressed is minus nRT natural log V2 as we want that means the heat uh, we need to, for this for the ideal gas to do work this is that much work we'll need to do to the environment we have to put into this amount of heat for it to uh, to do the work so that's the kind of uh, quantity so what we um, have accomplished here is that we can uh, for a process that clearly uh, can happen in this direction if we can also achieve the same uh, changing of the system but in the process where we can actually measure the work or heat involved in this process. Now the question is um, now are these work or heat uh, telling us something about the system's difference between the end point and the starting point? Okay, so um, let's see. So because we uh, carry out the process with a very special case that is a uh, reversible process, which means this process, the pathway is uniquely defined, meaning the ex internal pressure and the external pressure has to be the same. So this quantity is well defined, unlike in the cases where we have uh, any arbitrary way to push against a uh, random external pressure, we will get a very different kind of work and heat. In those cases, the measured work heat does not correspond to the change of some aspect of the state. But here, um, the, certainly if we carry out the expansion through a reversible isothermal expansion, and you can see the work and heat is well defined, and, and there is on, they're not related by any external undefined parameter. They are just depend on the some aspect of the system's parameter, such as uh, volume difference or temperature, right? So the question becomes, mm, so can we actually use either of this to describe some aspect of the system's difference? For example, we could say, hey, well, let's say when the gas has expanded from uh, this point into this point, even though uh, it's done by just re simply remove the, remove the barrier, but we can always say, well, this, some part of the system change. It changed in such that if we imagine the system was going through a isothermal expansion, there will be this much of heat uh, involved in doing the same thing. So we can all start call this uh, some of the state property. But here there's one problem. So we um, will focus on the dispersiveness of the system and we are not necessarily trying to calculate the heat involved in this process. In fact, we wish to even look at the system's dispersiveness at uh, various temperatures. For example, you could carry out this, disp uh, this process in one temperature of gas, but you could also carry out in a different uh, temperature process. And the same dispersiveness is achieved in regardless what temperature you are at. So clearly there's something here that we uh, want to consider that if we just focus on dispersiveness, dispersiveness and we kind of want to get, get away from uh, thinking about the work and heat. So if we're just trying to focus on the um, dispersiveness uh, change, then it would be, this might be something that 
uh, we can use to describe sums have changed. So that is, if we're trying to figure out what have changed to the system, regardless of what the temperature is, or if we want some sort of quantitative description of dispersion that related to measurable or calculable quantity, and this could be something that we can use. So what we should call this, maybe this is some sort of state property change, and that's called temporarily called the entropy. So this is actually one example of how we can uh, convert this very um, qualitative statement into a uh, quantity that we can actually either experimentally measure or in the ideal case, gas case, we can actually calculate. So, so the point of this whole example is trying, trying to show you that we can um, use some aspect of the state property to predict the changing of the system. That is to predict the dispersiveness. The, the, the intriguing part is that this new aspect of the property is not internal energy, is not entropy. It's also not simply volume change. But it's some of this intriguing uh, uh, formula over here. But if we can tie up to experimental measurables, and then we can say, hey, it's actually whatever the reversible energy uh, on the reversible state, the heat put in or out the system uh, over the temperature of the system. So that can be related to some aspect of the system's property. And that property uh, end up being entropy. So. So I want to emphasize here, so we use ideal gas to um, demonstrate that one aspect of the system in the ideal, case, ideal gas case, which can be represented by this formula, which is uh, has some expansion, work and heat, and we can, that is related to the entropy change of the ideal gas. But the much more vigorous, uh, uh, derivation will be needed to demonstrate this is a much more uh, generic concept. That is, for any given system, if the heat exchange to or from the system is undergo reversible process, then you are actually change that system's uh, entropy if you take the heat transfer to or from the system divide by temperature of that system. And this is actually more generic uh, representation or definition of entropy change, where the top is only used as a, a model or a ideal gas system to uh, show you how quantitatively we can arrive at this point. Where in the textbook, as you can see, they just simply stated this. But obviously, you have many other ways to define entropy. And in the future, you will learn from statistical thermodynamics where you can um, calculate entropy in um, uh, using different approaches. So uh, this uh, definition is actually uh, more broadly applicable other than ideal gas. For example, you can heat up any liquid and any, any solid uh, by raising its temperature, and that temperature increase uh, can be uh, also the heat transfer process can be considered uh, an entropy change, and you can calculate the entropy change uh, using a quantity we have already explained. For example, if you have a system that has a constant volume, and if you actually heat it up, uh, as a tiny temperature change, uh, and this is the amount of heat you're going to put in, you can always try to do the heating in a so small, so that also be uh, the, you can consider them to be reversible, so the tiny entropy change would be Cv delta T and over T. So similarly, if you do this on constant uh, pressure, you can use Cp delta T, and th this is also uh, reversible if you do so slowly, so where the environment outside the temperature is maintained the same, the same, you can also calculate entropy change uh, over the uh, uh, small range of the temperature. And obviously, as we showed in the uh, slides of PowerPoint, you can do this uh, over a long range of temperature, but you can, again, like we did earlier in the uh, calculation of the, uh, the work, you can break down the long, uh, large temperature 
uh, heating process in multiple steps. So then, then the, you can just add many tiny steps, as we showed in the PowerPoint uh, uh, presentation. You can use integration to calculate the entropy change. And here I'll just refer you to back look at the uh, the PPT of the lecture four.